Hey, I'm Jack, and welcome back to P5JS. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, I go over programming and color in those, so you could check them out. But in this video, I'll be going over how to think about making generative art. So I like to think about pieces in terms of their input and output. So what would the input be? Well, it could be random numbers. That's a pretty pretty easy one because um, you know you don't need to think of some data set to pull from you can just you can just get random ones for example in this sketch the input was randomly placed points and they're all moving at random angles so let's replicate that like normal i'm going to have the sketch take up the whole screen by passing inner width and inner height into create canvas and we're not going to draw a background in this sketch. Last video I talked about arrays which are a kind of variable that can hold multiple values so for our points let's make an array called points and I'll write let points equal brackets so it'll start out empty and then we'll fill it inside of setup. For every point and we might have lots of them we need to assign its position and how it moves so it would be annoying to write a line of code for every one. And luckily, we have a way to run the same piece of code many times. And it's called a for loop. And it looks similar to an if statement. All right, for parentheses, curly braces. And then we need to fill in the parentheses. So for loops work by changing a variable until a condition is false. For example, we might want to start a variable at 0, add 1 to our variable every time the loop runs, and stop it when it reaches 10. And that works well to give us the indexes for 10 elements in, in the array. So in the parentheses, I'll start by making a variable called i with a value of 10. So I'll write let i equal 10. And I finish that with a semicolon, which means I'm done making the variable. Then I'll give this loop its condition, which is checked every time the loop is run. I want the loop to stop when i reaches 10, so I'll write i less than 10. And finish with a semicolon again. Finally, I'll tell the loop how to change i for each run. I want i to change by 1 each time, so I'll write i equals i plus 1. Now that we've finished that, everything in the block of code below this will run 10 times, with i starting at 0 and finishing at 9. OK, so for each point, we need x, y, and an angle. So let's make variables for those. All right, let x equal random width. Width is how many pixels um, wide our canvas is. And passing that to random makes it the maximum random value we'll get from that. Y is pretty similar, except with height. So I'll write let y equal random height. And for the angle, its maximum is going to be 2 pi. So I'll write let a equal random 2 pi. 2 pi is another variable provided to us by p5. Now that we have all that we need for this point, we'd like to pack it into points i. So we need to have a way to put multiple values in the same variable. Like I said before, arrays can do this, but I'm going to use a dictionary instead. So instead of using numbers for indexes like a list, dictionaries can use almost anything. For our purposes, though, we'll use the indexes to name the elements inside. So dictionaries are wrapped in curly braces, and I'm going so I'm going to assign this to points i. I'm going to say points i equals curly braces. And we're simply going to put the variable x under the name x. So I can just write x colon x to say the name x gets the value x. And then I'll do the same for y. And we just need a, a comma to separate these. So let's say comma y, y colon y. Before the colon is the name and after is the value. So I could have named x instead xval. So I could have just written xval colon x, but we'll just keep the same name as the variable. So I could also put angle into this dictionary, but instead I'm going to put in how much x and y will change based on this angle. So this is going to be called dx and dy, and this is going to basically be the speed of our point. And I'm going to use the parametric equation to do this. One thing that this does need is a radius. So outside of setup, I'm going to write let r equal 5 for our radius. And now that we have that, inside of the dictionary, we can write 
dx is r times cosine of a, and dy is r times sine of a, and that comes right from the parametric equation. Now that we have our list of points created, we just need to move them, and we'll do that in draw. I'll use the same for loop to loop over the indexes in our list of points. So I'll write for let i equals 0, i is less than 10, i equals i plus 1. To make things easier, I'm going to make a variable for our current point. So I'll say let point equal points i. Hopefully it's becoming clear that on every run for, of this for loop, i increases by 1. So the variable point will be a different one every time. Our point variable now is going to have a dictionary that we made before, and we can access, access elements from a dictionary like this, point.x. So to change x by dx, we can say point x equals point x plus point.dx. And the same for y, point y equals point.y plus point.dy. Now that our points are moving, they might go off the screen, so let's make them bounce off the edges instead. All right, if point.x is more than width, or point.x is less than zero, which will run if our x value goes off the screen. So you're probably familiar with um, x is less than zero, or x is more than width. Um, and this symbol, two pipes, um, it's right above your enter key uh, if you hold shift, um, and that means or. So for either of those conditions, what we're going to want to do is we can just flip dx, so I'll say point dx equals point dx times negative 1. To do the same for y, I'll say if point dot y is more than height, or point dot y is less than 0, point dot dy equals point dot dy times negative 1. With that, we're done with the input to our sketch, and we can focus on putting these points on the canvas. Let's start by just drawing a circle at every point. So I can write circle point dot x, point dot y, 50. We're just passing our points x and y for the circles, and we're using 50 as a radius. I did have some typos in my code before, so just so you know, inner width definitely has two ends, not three. And this for loop should start at 0, not 10. But now that we have this result, it's pretty interesting, but I think some color could help. So I'm going to add a color to every points dictionary. And our loop that makes the points lists, I'll make another variable fill for the fill color of our point. So I'll write let fill equal color. The color function is a way to store color information without actually using it yet. So for the RGB values, I'm going to fill in random 255. You might remember that this is the maximum value in the RGB system, so we're making a random color. I'll also add our fourth number to this color, 50. This is the transparency of the color, so out of 255, this is about 20% transparent. Then we need to add this to our dictionary. And now in draw, before we call circle, we can call fill, point.fill, to use the color of our point. And in setup, I'm going to call no stroke so that we don't have the outlines around our shapes. And with that, our sketch is finished. I like to experiment with the transparency and the fill color, and also the radius used for dx and y, so try changing those. Here's another sketch with the same input, but the output is very different. The code is a bit different from how we wrote it, so uh, don't worry about that. But the important part is that I added another for loop inside of the outer for loop in draw. And this allows me to draw a line between every combination of points that we have. So my point with that is, is that with the same input, you can make a lot of different outputs. It can be difficult, though, to think of an input for a sketch. But usually, it's going to be some equation for geometry. Or in this case, it's, it's mostly random. YouTuber I've talked about before is the Coding Train. And they make lots of sketches in P5.js. And I really like their videos for inspiration. They usually show the whole process of them programming, so you can usually follow along. Thank you for watching this video. That concludes the workshop. We'll have a Zoom review for this video on April 9th, which you can sign up for below. Thanks to Communication Madison for hosting the workshop, and have a good one.